A monosaccharide is a molecule that has either the ketone or aldehyde functional group. And it has anywhere from three to six carbon atoms. In the monosaccharide, every single, key, uh, every single carbon atom has either an OH group attached or it is part of the carbon-oxygen double bond. These are two examples of monosaccharide molecules. They have a aldehyde or a ketone functional group, and as you can see, every single carbon atom has an oxygen attached to it. There are two different types of monosaccharides. One type is an aldose, and the other type is called a ketose. As the name kind of suggests, an aldose is a monosaccharide that has the aldehyde functional group, and a ketose is a monosaccharide that has the ketone functional group. More specifically, the aldose molecule has its carbon-oxygen double bond on carbon number one, and the ketose molecule has its carbon-oxygen double bond always on carbon number two. With this system, we would number the carbon chain from top to bottom, like I'm doing right now for both of these molecules. One, two, three, four, five. We can also classify monosaccharides based on the number of carbon atoms that are in the molecule. If the molecule has three carbon atoms, we would call it a triose. If we also wanted to include the aldose or ketose notation, we would put that first. So we could say an aldotriose or a ketotriose. If a molecule has four carbon atoms, then we would call that a tetrose. If it has five carbon atoms, we will call it a pentose. And if it has six carbon atoms, we'll call it a hexose. All of these having the ending of os, whether we're talking about this notation or this notation, os is the suffix that we use for sugars. So with these two things in mind, let's take a look at this first monosaccharide and, and give it a classification. First of all, it's an aldose so because it has the carbon on or the carbon oxygen double bond on carbon number one. Second of all, because it has four carbon atoms, it's a tetrose. And if we wanted to put these two names together, again, we would put the aldo part first and we would say aldo tetrose. Let's try again with this molecule right here. This molecule has the carbon oxygen double bond on carbon number two, so it's a ketose. It has a total of five carbon atoms, which means it's a pentose. We put the two names together, the keto part goes first, so this is a keto pentose. Monosaccharides are typically drawn using Fischer projection notation. So I'm gonna draw a monosaccharide in the Fischer projection notation over here. Remember in this notation, we use a straight line to represent the carbon skeleton. I made mine a little bit too big. And then we use these horizontal lines to show the, the substituents that are coming off of those carbon atoms in the straight chain. Up at the top, sometimes we write the carbon atom symbol C um, and draw, in this case I'm drawing an aldose, but we don't always include that carbon with its letter up there, so sometimes it'll just be like typical line notation like this. And then down along the carbon chain, we'll just have a couple of, uh, I'm just gonna throw a couple of OH groups on this molecule and fill some hydrogens in as well. And then down here at the very bottom, uh, CH2OH. Like with all Fischer projections, um, the way that the notation works is that every single carbon atom at one of these intersections here is a chiral carbon, meaning it has four different substituents attached to it. The carbon atom that's at the very top and also at the very bottom uh, is not chiral. This carbon atom isn't chiral because it has two hydrogens attached. This carbon atom isn't chiral because it only has three bonds. So this molecule right here is an aldose and it is a six carbon chain. So this would be an example of an aldohexose. Um, this molecule's name, it does have a specific name, is D-glucose. So this is the molecule's name, D-glucose. The name of any monosaccharide, including this D-glucose molecule, is based on 
the position of the OH groups on the chiral carbons, the carbons in the center of the molecule. So the position of these OH groups, whether they are on the left side or the right side of the molecule, is what dictates the name of the molecule. Glucose, for example, is going to be a molecule that has the OH groups on the right side, the left side, the right side, and the right side. That's what makes it glucose. Um, the letter at the beginning of the name could be either a D or it could be L. There's an L glucose as well. And this letter reflects the position of the OH group at the very bottom of the carbon chain. When the OH group is on the right side, the last OH group is on the right side, then we call the molecule D. If the last OH group was on the left side, then we would call the molecule L. So last OH on the left side is going to be an L. And sometimes we call these a D sugar or an L sugar, with sugar just being like an everyday word for monosaccharide. So again, as a refresher, the name of the molecule comes from the relative position of the OH groups, either on the left side or on the right side. Uh, the relative position of the OH groups in the center of the molecule. And then the prefix, either D or L, is based on whether the very last OH group is on the left side or the right side. If the last OH group is on the right-hand side, we call it a D sugar. And if the last OH group was over on the left-hand side, we would call it an L sugar.